Welcome to another episode of Eat In with Adam and John, me being Adam. And today we're going to make uh, this lovely soup recipe I found, which is uh, curry apple carrots. And obviously here's the carrots. And it's a pretty tasty soup. It's pretty easy to make. Um, you will need a blender though. We'll need a blender. And the first thing we need to do is put a little bit of oil, in this case canola oil, in the bottom of a big pot, um, about a tablespoon or two, just enough to get a thin coating on the bottom of the uh, pot. Um, and then put that on probably just low heat for right now, or medium low. And then of course, we'll need the curry. This, uh, this curry here I bought at the grocery store. You can find it among the uh, ordinary spices, or you can go to a specialty store that uh, focuses on, on Indian foods, so probably have a larger variety. Uh, this one's pretty basic, and it needs to be started in the oil early on because uh, a lot of the spices in the curry need to be heated in oil to get the full flavor out of them. So that's one tablespoon. And if you're off a little, that's all right. If you find you really want a more intense taste, you could add more curry, or um, maybe put like red pepper or black pepper in if you wanted a little spicier. Um, and if you don't really like it, you can put less or none at all. It's, it's pretty optional. All right, while that's going, next is the carrots. So we need a pound and a quarter of carrots. Uh, Went to the grocery store, bought a bag that's a pound of carrots. So this doesn't have to be super exact, so you could get like two bags and sort of guesstimate how much a quarter of that second bag is. Or um, if you have a weighing device, you can use it to weigh out your carrots, especially if you get your carrots from your garden. Uh, for my quarter pound, I actually pulled a carrot out of my garden. Um, so you just chop these up. You don't need to be, they don't need to be super small because um, after we cook them in the pot uh, we're going to put them in the blender. You don't want it to be too big though because otherwise it could take a really long time to cook them in the uh, pot. You want to get them nice and tender before putting them in the blender. the lid on that for right now. Turn the heat up. Next is, as I said, an onion. One onion. Again, you don't have to cut these terribly small because uh, the salt is going to be put into the blender after it's cooked. But you don't want it too big because then um, it'll take a real long time to get it cooked in the pot before you put it in the blender. After the onion is the apple. This is one uh, cooking apple. I don't really know what a cooking apple is, but my favorite kind of apple is a Granny Smith apple. So that's what this one is. Um, probably you can use any kind of apple you want. I found, having made this before, that you should peel the apple because if you don't, you'll get apple peelings throughout the soup. And that's just not a good thing. It just put, has a weird texture added to the soup. And of course, the apple needs to be chopped up. I'll tell you, I'm amazed at how many different kinds of apples there are. I mean, when I was a kid, there were red apples and green apples, and that was pretty much it. Now you got you know, the golden delicious, the, is it called red delicious or just delicious? I think it's red delicious. To be honest, I don't like the delicious apples. <laughs> they just seem kind of bland to me. And then you got like, um, well, I can't even think of any others. Granny Smith, of course. But, you know, go to the grocery store and there's like, like, I don't know, half a dozen different kinds of apples. And that's just like, like, you know, the tip of the iceberg there. It's pretty amazing. And that's all done by human uh, breeding programs. I'm like, wow, that must have took a real long time, you know, to get these different strains of apples from 
whatever the original kind of apple is like. So, um, we let the uh, apple and onion and carrot cook for probably about 10 minutes. Um, the amount of time it takes will vary based on how big uh, chunks of carrot you have, because that's the thing that takes the longest to cook in here. Um, to test to see if you're actually done cooking, is you just find a big old hunk of carrot in your pot, and if the fork goes in really smoothly and easily, um, it's done. If it is kind of hard to get it in there, that means that you need to let it cook a little longer. So, I'm going to heat off, and what I'm going to now need to do is move this hot mixture into the blender. Now, uh, depending on how comfortable you are with dealing with this hot food, because right now it's really, really hot, um, you might just want to sit it off the burner and wait a while, uh, which is perfectly fine. I, however, am overly confident of my skills, and so I'm just going to start spooning it over into the blender. Also going to need uh, some, in this case, water. Uh, it says in the recipe, chicken broth. I'm going to use uh, vegetable bouillon, but I'm not, I'm not going to put that in the blender. So I'll put in uh, about one and a half cups of water into here. And then we get going. Seems a little thick, but that's okay because we haven't finished adding water to it yet. So the total is three cups of broth, or in my case, water in a bouillon cube. Stir that up a little, turn the heat back on. Um, you're now going to want to bring this to a, a simmer, basically, just getting it heat it back up to the temperature you want for um, your soup to be. Uh, you, and uh, hopefully you'll uh, catch our next episode in a couple weeks. Thanks.